Hi, good morning and welcome to worship. This is a good time and a good place for us to be together today, whether you are returning or this is your first time. Our worship service for today includes communion. And so in these moments before we begin, I invite you to grab whatever it is you need for communion, wherever you find yourself today. Bread, wine, cracker, grape juice, water, coffee, tea, toast, whatever it is, and to have it with you for worship. We will also be lighting three candles today to symbolize the Holy Trinity. And so if you wanted to have candles with you for worship, you are invited to get those too. But please know that we will light them together in the service itself. And so our worship service today is called the Holy Trinity Revealing One Truth at a Time. And so today we sort of stand on this moment which kind of bridges two periods of time in the church calendar. So for the past 50 days, we've been celebrating the season of Easter, which kind of culminated last week in Pentecost, which was the outpouring of the Spirit as Jesus ascended to the Father. And this week, we kind of make the transition to what comes next. So um, in the church, we often call this ordinary time or the time after Pentecost. And it seems like it lasts forever because you would see if you were in worship in church with me that the pyramids, so the things that are on the table and on the lectern and all of that are green. And so we do this green season that's coming up. And so Holy Trinity kind of bridges the space between Easter and this ordinary time that we're about to enter in together. And during ordinary time, we hear all about all of those pieces of Jesus's life that we don't hear about during Advent and Lent and Easter. So all of the stories of miracles and healings and conversations we get to participate in and hear in the coming weeks. But Holy Trinity in particular it's kind of a weird festival of the church. Um, it's the only festival of the church that isn't really based upon an experience or an event. So you think Christmas, you think the birth of Jesus, you think Easter, you think the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus. But Holy Trinity is all about a doctrine, right? Uh, an idea that God is, while well, three persons um, you might hear it Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You might hear it Creator, Liberator, Sustainer. But while God is in three persons, God is also one. If you were in my confirmation class, you might ask me how this can be, and I would just tell you that it is. And so I will tell you that today as well. But open yourself up to maybe experiencing God in our worship service today or in your world in lots of different ways, sometimes through the Creator, sometimes through our brother Jesus, and sometimes through the gift of the Holy Spirit, as I told you last week, is kind of like the wild, crazy aunt who just sort of goes and does whatever she wants. And so one more time as we get ready for worship, I invite you to grab whatever it is you need right where you are, a candle and to find a quiet space. And if you are willing and able to share our stream out there for those looking for a space to connect with the holy, I would appreciate that. So please join me now in taking a deep breath. And welcome my beloved to worship. As always, please know that you are invited to participate in worship however feels appropriate for you right where you are. Maybe that means typing in the comments like a prayer request, using the emojis if you're on Facebook, singing the songs or praying the prayers out loud or in your heart. But please know wherever you find yourself today that that space is welcome and you are welcome here. Our service for today begins with the gathering. Please join me now in our call to worship. I will light a light in the name of the Maker, who lit the world and breathed the breath of life for me. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I will light a light in the name of the Son, who saved the world and stretched out his hand to me. I will light a light in the name of the Spirit, who encompasses the world and blessed my soul with yearning. We light 
these three lights for the trinity of love, God above us, God beside us, God beneath us, the beginning, the end, the everlasting one. We light these three lights for ourselves and each other, for our families, friends, and enemies, for our work, hopes, and struggles. We light these three lights for those in need, for people and churches, for peace and justice, for a future filled with hope. We light these three lights and give thanks to you, O God. Alleluia. Amen. Let us pray. O Trinity of love, 
in community yet one, we come to this place to worship you. The knees of our hearts we bow in the sight of the God who has created us, in the sight of the Son who died for us, in the sight of the Spirit who helps us in friendship and affection. Through your own Son, O Maker of all, grant us the fullness our lives long for. Love of God, love from God, the smile of God, the grace of God, the fear of God, the imagination of God, and God's purpose in all things. So may we live in this world as saints and angels do in heaven, each shadow and light, each day and night, each moment in kindness. Give us your spirit. Amen. My beloved, God's love for us and for this world goes beyond what we can imagine. Therefore, let us be confident in God's love, the Spirit meeting us where we are, and the grace of Jesus among us by sharing the peace, saying, The peace of Christ be with you always. Please take this moment to share Christ's peace, both with those with whom you are worshiping and those with whom you are worshiping across all distances and divides. Our service for today continues with the word. A reading from Proverbs. Do you hear wisdom calling? Can you hear insight raising her voice? She's taken her stand at the heights beside the way, at the busy intersection, right in the city square where the traffic is thickest, she shouts to you. Everyone out here on the streets I call. I'm telling you how to live. God sovereignly made me the first of their acts. Before they did anything else, I was brought into being a long time ago, well before Earth got its start. I arrived on the scene before ocean, yes, even before springs and rivers and lakes. Before mountains were sculpted and hills took shape, I was already there, newborn. Long before God stretched out earth, her, Earth's horizons and tended to the detail of soil and weather and set sky firmly in place, I was there. When they mapped and gave borders to wild ocean, built the vast vault of heaven and installed the fountains that fed the ocean, when they drew the boundary for the sea, posted a sign that said no trespassing, and then staked out Earth's foundations. I was right there with them, making sure everything fit. Day after day I was there. I was their delight, rejoicing before them, rejoicing with the world of things and creatures, delighting in the human family. Word of God, word of life. Majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens, above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babies and infants, you have established strength because of your foes. Still the enemy and the avenger When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers The moon and the stars which you have set in place 
What is man that you are mindful of him? And the son of man that you care for him, yet you have made him a little lower than the heavenly beings. And crown him with glory and honor. Given him dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet. All sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the heavens of the sea whatever passes along the paths of the sea Poured into our hearts a reading from Romans, like a cup, like a chalice, like a basin, like a bowl. When the Spirit comes, let it find our hearts like this, shaped like something that knows how to receive what is given, that knows how to hold what comes to fill that knows how to gather itself around what arrives as unbidden unsought unmeasured love the holy gospel according to saint john jesus said i still have many things to tell you but you can't bear them now but when the Advocate comes, the Spirit of the truth, he will take you by the hand and guide you into all the truth there is. He won't draw attention to himself, but will make sense out of what is about to happen, and indeed out of all that I have done and said. He will honor me. He will take from me and deliver it to you. Everything the Father has is also mine. That is why I have said he takes from me and delivers to you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Grace and peace to you, my beloved, from the one whose ways are truth and life and grace. Amen. For most of my week, as I was getting ready for this morning, and the only festival in the entire Christian calendar that celebrates a doctrine, an idea, instead of a life-changing event, yes, as I was getting ready for this morning, the only words that appeared on my computer screen for most of the week where my sermon was supposed to be were the words, so what? followed a couple of days later by the very deep and theologically profound question, who cares? Because you see, as hard as I tried, and I will admit I didn't actually try that hard, I couldn't get my heart to care this week about God being three different persons and yet one being. Yes, despite the vast amounts of ink and blood that were spilled in the early years of the church about the understanding of God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, my heart still wondered all week long what difference 
does all of this three in one, one in three Trinity stuff really make? Yes, in a world where people are tired, in a world where people are physically, emotionally, and spiritually spent, in a world where people are struggling with illness or loss or broken relationships or financial hardships, in a world where people are lonely and disappointed and angry and heartsick, in a world where the sin of racism and violence and fear and hate seem to be on display almost everywhere I look, in a world where some of us are barely hanging on to a belief in one God, let alone in three. Why? Why does this Trinity stuff, this doctrine, even really matter? Now, thankfully for me, and maybe for you too, I think Jesus gets this, gets the whys and the who cares and the what's the difference that may be running through our minds this morning, or in my case, all week. Yes, I think Jesus gets that in the face of the crap, that piles up around us way too easily in this world, the last thing we have the energy to worry about is whether or not we get it, whether or not we have him and the rest of this whole three-in-one God thing figured out. Yes, Jesus says to the disciples and to us who happen to be listening in, on the conversation. Yes, Jesus says, I still have so many things to tell you, so many things for you to understand, but I know that right now, given everything that is unfolding around you, given that there are days when you cannot even begin to believe that my ways are ways of life and hope and love always, yes, given all of that, Jesus says, I know that right now, you cannot bear it. You cannot bear all of who I am, all of what I have to share. Yes, I know, Jesus says, I know that you cannot hold all of my ways and thoughts together. And that's okay, he says. You don't have to. No, all you have to do is trust that I am with you, that my spirit is with you showing you glimpses of who I am of my ways in this world. Now, don't think this means you have me completely figured out, Jesus continues, that your faith or your worship or your prayers or your songs or your experiences or even one particular scripture story can contain me, can contain all of who I am. For the truth is, one day I may show up like a shepherd, fending off your enemies and feeding you by hand, and the next day like a whirlwind that blows away your certainties and carefully crafted plans. Yes, the truth is, one day I may show up like a mother hen who hides you under the shelter of my wings, no matter what it costs me in the end, and the next day show up like the sound of silence that leaves you wondering where I am. But no matter how I show up, Jesus says, no matter how you may experience me in this world, trust that through the Spirit, I am with you exactly where you are, exactly where you are yet to be, revealing, Jesus says, a little bit each and every time, as much as you can bear in that moment or that place of who I am of my ways, revealing a little bit each and every time of the things that I value, of the truth of what it means to follow me, to ventures of which you cannot see the ending by pathways yet untrodden through all the perils and joys that are yet to even be. So take a deep breath, Jesus tells us and those disciples. Yes, take a deep breath and trust. Trust that I am with you. 
that my spirit, like my breath, moves in, around, and through you on this day and on all the days that are to come, bearing you into the truth that this world is in fact not God forsaken as it sometimes seems, but rather this world is instead God love with a love that promises to never let it go, that promises to resurrect it each and every time it needs it through me, through the parent, through the spirit, and through you. Jesus says, the ones who bear upon your heads the imprint of us three. So why should I? Why should we, my beloved, care about the Trinity. Why does this day of doctrine even matter? Well, because we, like those who have gone this way before us, are children of the Trinity, the ones who through the witness of our lives gives this world glimpses of life and hope and grace and God. Amen. Go through the wilderness, calling 
Our service for today continues with the prayers of the people, and you are invited, as you always are, to type any prayer requests that you have, trusting that they will be held by me and by our community this week. And so rejoicing in the triune God, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. For the church to be enlivened by the Spirit, for the renewal of faith, for the gift, baptism, for the protection of wilderness spaces, for the cleansing of earth's waters, for the flourishing of all creatures, for the nations to act with justice, for the ceasing of prejudice, for the hearts of leaders to be filled with wisdom and peace, for the use of violence to be shunned, for the restoring of relationships, for the hurting and fearful. for the isolated and lonely to be built up, for the nurturing of communities, for the gift of joy, for our prayers. For the witness of the saints, for the Emmanuel Nine to be remembered, for all grieving families. God of every time and place, filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those of our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen. Our service continues with the meal. God feeds us with the presence of Jesus Christ. Let us pause to offer all of what we have and all of who we are to the giver of all life. God the life, God the hope, God the peace be with you and also with you. Beloved of the Most Holy, open your hearts to the one who guides you into love and truth. We open ourselves to the mystery of God and community. Heirs of grace and salvation, give thanks to the one who has claimed you forever. We lift our praise to God, crying with creation. Glory, glory, glory. Holy God, you alone are holy. You alone our God. The universe declares your praise beyond the stars, beneath the sea, within each cell, with every breath. We praise you, O God. Generations bless your faithfulness through the water, by night and day, across the wilderness, out of exile and into the future. Bless you, O God. We give you thanks for your dear son at the heart of human life, near to those who suffer beside the sinner among the poor with us now. We thank you, O God. Among friends gathered round a table, Jesus took bread and broke it and said, this is my body broken for you. Later, he took a cup of wine and said, this is the new relationship with God made possible because of my death. Take it all of you to remember me. Amen. Amen. We pray for the gift of your spirit in our gathering within this meal among your people throughout the world. Blessing, praise, and thanks to you, holy God, through Jesus Christ, by your spirit in your church without end. Amen. Amen. And so gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Our Father, Father, who who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy thy name. name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, come, thy will will be be done. done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So taste and see that the Lord is good. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. Amen. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. And so may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Our service concludes with the sending.
And so a blessing for all of you. Go out this day in faith, knowing you are surrounded by the presence of God. And may God grant you wisdom for the journey. May Christ Jesus drench you in love. And may the Holy Spirit lead you into the dance of life. Amen. And so go in peace, my beloved, living your life with the Spirit. And thank you so much for worshiping with us this week. And I cannot wait to worship with all of you again soon.